planting the seeds of your life. When I first hired a lawn guy to cut my grass, he commented, Wow, your yard could be featured in the field guide to Kansas flora. And as the seasons come and go, I become more and more impressed with the variety of grasses, flowers, and herbs that spring up randomly on that same plot of land. First, it was dandelions, thousands of them, and it seemed like it was all the lawn was. Then a couple of months went by and wham, there was self heal with its tiny purple flowers, growing in profusion with lemon balm and crabgrass all around. The next year, there was a completely different round of flora, and it got me to wondering, where did all the seeds come from and how? Each species and variety seemed to get their opportunity to bloom out, and then they would exit to make way for the next group to spring up. I couldn't tell if each plant was there all along and just came and went, or if the seeds blew in from the neighborhood or were carried in by animals, which are plentiful as well, rabbits, gophers, chipmunks, and wandering cats and dogs. Finally, the metaphor hit me. We plant the seeds of our experience with every thought and feeling we create. Joy, sadness, love, frustration, affection, wonder, all are the seeds that eventually grow into more of these experiences. Here in the sometimes confounding mirror universe, reflecting back to us every aspect of our being, it's easy to buy into the illusion that it is all happening to us instead of because of us. Yet this is the nature of being and playing in this matrix of objective physical reality. But is it really objective and is it actually real? (laughs) I know many of my friends and family have been asking this existential question lately as we attempt to make sense of the wild info wars being waged by the controllers to capture and imprison us in webs of fear and helplessness. I say the answer to that question is no. It's not objective and it certainly is not real. Fear has been acronymed as false evidence appearing real. And it has been weaponized to make us believe our thoughts and feelings have no power and that we must hunker down and submit to circumstances beyond our control. Poppycock. What has happened is that over the course of our lives, we've created and entertained fearful thoughts, negative feelings, and scary scenarios that were actually seeds. Then, all the warmongers and controllers had to do was to water and fertilize those thoughts and feelings with convincing experts and mass media pundits telling us our worst fears were being realized. And then, they had us. Fight or flight took over, we lost our minds and situational awareness, and caved into a dystopian new normal. But wait! Choices are now being made to pull up those weeds of fear we planted and replant the ground with flowers of love, compassion, and understanding. And I think that if any good was to come from all the viral fears and lockdowns and closings, the longer it went on, the more time we had to research it, get our minds right, and to start retaking our personal power. We're finding, just as Dorothy did in The Wizard of Oz, that the terrifying great and powerful Oz is nothing more than a flim-flam man behind a curtain of threatening technology. And thanks to brave little alternative media Toto, the controller was exposed as just another pathetic person with no more power than the rest of us. A large part of quantum living is becoming aware of the pretty amazing standard equipment we all get by coming into this life. For instance, imagination, the gateway to all realities, and the control panel of our desires. Then there is the heart, the fortress of source, our immediate access to God, and the true brain of intuition about anything and everything. These two aspects alone guarantee our freedom from even death itself, and yet without the acknowledgement and embrace of these powers, we are vulnerable to having them used against us. 
All the crimes against humanity were perpetrated by the commandeering of these powers through the manipulations of the dark forces. Yet their grip on humanity was as tenuous as a moment it takes to make one choice. And then the control goes away. Freedom returns and the seeds of love and compassion begin to bear fruit once again. So this is how our gardens grow. With purpose and intent, plant those seeds of love, joy, ease, compassion everywhere and at every moment possible. And watch as our lives blossom and bear those fruits. We humans are destined for better things, higher things, greater things. And through the powers of the imagination fueled by the heart, we can transcend any difficulty, conquer any fear, and change the world into the paradise it was always meant to be. You have been listening to This Quantum Life by Boyd Martin. Brought to you by the Quantum Health Newsletter from Pure Energy Rx. www.pureenergyrx.com